Lori, what are they doing wrong? Like when they buy the practice, like wh wh why does this always just blow up in their face, you know, six months later? What's, what's, what's happening? It's, it's, it's not always a problem that new dentists um, see because if they're ahead of the game and they meet people and they have a, a prepared plan to help with the transitions, then they're ahead. The trouble is when you go to dental school, you don't often learn how do you manage this part of your practice? How do you start out? Um, what are the things that are basic key elements on how you're going to set yourself up for success outside of the production, but how you will fit in and engage and build on your team. So the change management piece is all about starting that foundational and then building on that as you go, but doing it at a, at a pace that's a palatable pace and uh, that works well with other human beings because they're not just pegs or chest pieces. They're actually- That's pieces. a good point. Yeah, because sometimes it's like the dentist moves at a speed that's like, Normal people cannot change that quickly, especially if they're, you know, they've been working in that practice for 20 years and you're coming in as like a 30 year old dentist, like we're going to change this and this and this. And it's like, it, it's going to turn into chaos. So no, the pace is a good point. I never thought about that, but it makes, makes sense. Yeah. And that goes hand in hand with personality styles because there are certain personality styles that uh, are good and get excited and, and juiced up about change where others need a little bit more time. They need to know a lot more of the why behind the change and they need a little bit more information and ask more questions to, uh, to make that transition smooth for them. So it's almost, it's a customized experience. experience. And we work with DISC uh, personality profiling that helps to, uh, support that it helps support the communication it also helps support uh, problem solving and you know ultimately it also helps in the way that we talk to our patients and present cases and that it's good yeah so one thing that's come up recently with uh, like an actual example is uh, a dentist we talked to bought a practice now generally the you know original the principal you know stays on to make sure that the transition is smooth they might be there for you know like six months or whatever and they said something that kind of caught me off guard. They said, you know, we're having some staff issues and, you know, the staff, the problem is they're like, they're really loyal to the old dentist. So like, you know, he's been around a long time, but you know, he's got to go because it's causing all these problems. And it's like, if the staff like the old dentist, what do you think if he disappears all of a sudden, oh, now we're loyal to you? Like, like you should probably find out why they really like that old dentist. Because number one, that's a good sign. It means he was doing something right. There's something that they liked and respected about, uh, you know, his leadership or whatever he was doing. Um, and I asked them, like, have you guys sat down with your with this team and maybe maybe take them out to lunch, maybe do a one on one meeting and ask them, like, what is it you really respected about the old owner? Because it's 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 awesome to see that, like, he must be doing something right. What is it that he was doing that you want to make sure we don't lose? Um, because my goal isn't to just like turn everything upside down. Like I wanted, you guys did a great job. I wanted, this is why I wanted to buy this business and this is what I want to continue. And they looked at me and they said like, no, we haven't had any meetings like that. It's like, well, have you, what meetings have you had with them? It's like, we just introduced ourselves like, hey, we're the new owners, <laughs> right? So, uh, but they never, it's like, and my thinking then was like, did you just assume when you bought this business, like it just came with the staff, like they're a piece of furniture, like, oh yeah, it just, they just, they're just part of this business that I acquired. Like if they don't like you, they won't, they won't stick around or even worse, they will stick around, but they'll undermine every decision you make. Right. So it's like, you need to learn this leadership part. And they looked at me like, I've never heard of any of this. It makes so much sense, but I've never done any of this. So I guess, you know, uh, my thinking was like, do you guys not know anything about leadership, like how to run a team? And then the reality is they don't. They don't know what they don't know. They spent a decade in dental school. They're amazing clinicians. They have absolutely no clue how to run a business. 